We'll pick up in verses. Um, uh, we'll pick up in verses uh, 18 through uh, through the beginning of 19. There it says, after staying for some time, Paul said farewell to the brothers and sisters and sailed away to Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. He shaved his head at uh, Sincre because of a vow he had taken. When he had reached Ephesus, he left them there, but he himself entered the synagogue and debated with the Jews. When they asked him to stay for a longer time, he declined, but he said farewell and added, I'll come back to you again if God wills. And then he set sail from Ephesus. On landing at Caesarea, he went to Jerusalem and greeted the church, then went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he set out, traveling through one place after another, the region of Galatia, Phrygia, uh, and strengthening all the disciples. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of a uh, native Alexandrian, an elegant man who was competent in the use of scriptures, arrived in Ephesus. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately about Jesus, though he only knew of John's <coughs> baptism. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. After Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. When he wanted to cross over <clears throat> to Achaia, the brothers and sisters wrote to the disciples to welcome him. After he arrived, he was a great help to those who, by grace, had believed. For he vigorously refuted the Jews in public, demonstrating that through the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. While Apollos was in Cor Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions and came to Ephesus. He found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, they told him. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Into what, uh, into what then were you baptized, he asked. Into John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people that they should believe in the one who would come after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began to speak in other tongues and to prophesy. Now, there were about 12 men in all. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you, <clears throat> and we ask that as we study the Scripture as so often, Lord, we want the truth of your Word to, to, uh, to be proclaimed. Lord, just take all of our own ideas and, and whatever out of it, Father, and just let it be yours, Father. So I pray. Amen. As we uh, take a look at this uh, Scripture there, um, we are back when... Uh, if we go from that verse 18 to the beginning of 19, there's a lot of time that went through there. You just don't, you don't maybe realize it because obviously he's, he is, uh, he's, he's, if you remember when he was in Corinth, when Paul was in Corinth, he needed, uh, he, he was getting tired. He was getting weary. He was just, he was getting worn out. And we, we see that in both of his writings and we also see that with what it was done there. And through God's uh, divine providence, he was uh, protected there. Uh, by a, 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 uh, uh, a non-Christian uh, judge. He just said, I want to deal with this. And he was able to stay in Corinth for about a, a year and a half. Uh, and a, a after that time, he goes, all right, I, am, I need to get back. He wants to get back. And in verse 18, we see just a little bit of what's going on there. In verse 18, he takes some sort of vow where he has to shave his head. Uh, my assumption and the assumption of... of, of I, I can't even say it's my assumption. I'm totally taking this from other people who are way smarter than me. So other people's assumption that I tend to agree with uh, would be that uh, that Paul is 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 almost like he's taken like a Nazarite vow. If you remember uh, in the Old Testament, you could you would shave your head, and then there would be some some promises you would do. You wouldn't have any. You wouldn't touch anything uh, unclean or dead, and you wouldn't uh, take any um, take any wine. And and there was different kind of levels of that. And so. It just says that he, he took this vow and he had shaved his head. So one would think that he's probably kind of taken a bit of a Nazarite vow, which is, which is a little odd because Paul isn't, uh, he, he's not under the Old uh, Testament anymore. He's not under the Old Covenant. In fact, that's, uh, we see that really imminently as he goes in with some of his other letters uh, that, that we are part of this, this new covenant. That's what we celebrate with the, with the Lord's Supper, is that when we say, take this and eat, this is the sign of the new covenant to you. 
And so when someone comes up to you and says something to the effect of, well, if you believe the Bible's always true, why are you uh, eating, you know, bacon or, 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 or fish that has scales on it or any number of, or fish that doesn't have scales on it or any number of things like that, one of the first things that they are doing is that they are pulling out Old Testament dietary restrictions that would have been true for Jews pre-New uh, Covenant. And, and, and it, it's kind of a, a weird thing because... Uh, what people will do is they'll say, but, but I thought the Bible was true in its entirety. And I say, the Bible is absolutely true in entirety. But I think you can, anyone with, with just a little bit of common sense can understand that as the story walks its way through, the, 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 the story adapts and changes, not because, of, not because God changed his plan, but because he is laying out his plan for us. All right? And, and it's, it's, it's important that we really stress that. When we study the Old Testament... What we always need to be looking for is how is that looking at, how is that pointing us to Jesus? And when we study specifically the Levitical law, what you see there is that if you wanted to live a perfect life, it's defining perfection. You're not going to do any of this wrong, and this is all this stuff. And what it does is it paints this wonderful picture of, as, as you study that, and even as the Pharisees and Sadducees study that, they would go, there's no way we can do all this stuff. And that's the exact conclusion that you have to come to. There was no way that, we, that our righteousness was ever going to get us to heaven. It was never going to work. That we have this, this, this Old Testament, uh, the, the, the book of the law, the portion that was saying these are all the rules, uh, was to prove to you how terrible humans are. And if you don't believe me, just, just I mean, turn on the news and just see it. All right? it it's just pretty apparent. Hasn't changed a lot in the last couple of millennia. All right? We're terrible. And so we, we, when we take a look at this, we're going, what is, what is Paul doing? What, why would he take this, this vow? He's not under that law. And what I think is happening here, and, and it, it, it gets glossed over, and we're not going to spend very much time on it because I want to get to something else and, uh, anyway, but I think what you're seeing is he's struggling a little bit with the way he was raised, right? You've seen him struggle just a little bit. He was raised as a Jew amongst all Jews, right? He studied under Gamaliel. He did all this stuff. And when we study this, it is the truth of the gospel that when we read what is wrote, that when, when Paul makes his writings to First and Second Corinthians and Galatians and Ephesians and Philippians and, and Romans and all that kind of stuff, when he writes, he is writing as a man but he is, he is writing the words of God. It is, the, the scripture is God breathed. And when we study what he does here, it, it, we, we are seeing him still as a human. Remember when he had the, the, the substantial disagreement between him and Barnabas. And he's like, fine, we're separating. We're going to go our different ways. Now, God uses that to, to great good. But I think you're seeing him kind of struggle just a little bit here. Now, Again, there could be there could be some other answers uh, for that. The, the main purpose of that dialogue is simply to say that he is in Ephesus. He goes to Ephesus, and then he, he goes back to Jerusalem. He, he goes, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. i got to go back. I really want to get back to Jerusalem for a very specific um, uh, uh, offering, or not offering, but uh, celebration. Is gonna, it could have been the Passover. It could have been the Feast of the Tabernacles. We don't know, but he just had a hankering to get back uh, to uh, Jerusalem, so he, he leaves and he goes back to Jerusalem. And that, uh, when he goes to Jerusalem, then he goes back up to Antioch, and that finishes his second uh, journey. Remember, he was on one already. This was this that was the second. And then when we, as we read through uh, the rest of them, pick up with what Paul's talking in verse in chapter nineteen. When you see him come back, is that he leaves Antioch. He cut, he takes like the more northern route. If you've got a Bible with a, with a pretty good map on the back, you can see what what, what I mean by this. But he goes kind of the northern route, hits some smaller churches, and gets to Ephesus. He gets right back there. So when we look at uh, verse 18 in Acts chapter 18, and then look at verse 1 in Acts chapter 19, there's a substantial this, uh, time gap there. He had to have gotten on a boat, traveled all the way to Jerusalem, goes to Antioch, and then gets himself back over uh, to Ephesus. So there's a lot of stuff happening there. What we do know that is happening there is that we are introduced to this new person uh, named Apollos. And what we know about him is that he's a very uh, knowledgeable man. He uses the scriptures. He, 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 is, he, he is a uh, um, 
uh, he, he's he's a good teacher. We get to see we get to see that, and uh, he meets, and we get to see our our buddies uh, Priscilla and Aquila again. And remember, Paul met with them uh, in the last uh, chapter or last week, and we see where Paul is really built up by them, and they're, they're tent makers, and they they, they have a uh, they, they they shared a lot of time with Paul, uh, and now they are teaching Apollos because what they are what what Apollos. Um, did there in, in verse 26 says he began to speak I'm sorry before that he had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit was speaking and teaching accurately about Jesus though he only knew of John's baptism so he's and, and we see this this John's baptism thing follows through and that's really the, the keynote of today's uh, scripture is by what baptism are we baptized so that's, that's really where we need to really focus on. I, I hope I didn't spend too much time talking about Paul and what's the travels and stuff, but the, the real question is the baptism. So we have this Apollos guy who's, who's apparently pretty smart. He's apparently really smart, right? He's able to discern through the scriptures and, and say, like, this is what's going on, and he's able to instruct in the way of the Lord, but he doesn't quite have it all right. And so Priscilla and Aquila come, who have studied with with. Uh, with uh, with Paul, who have, who have literally made tents with Paul, and, and, and he, they go and say, hey, let's just help you out. I want to I teach you. You're missing a couple of pieces here. And they teach him. And notice that Apollos doesn't get mad about that and wander off and, 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 and stomp away and, or anything like that. He, no, he, he says, ah. Oh. He gets it more accurately, and, and he goes and he studies. He go, actually crosses over to the, other, uh, to the other members of the church there, uh, because he wants to learn about this. And in verse 28, it says, He vigorously refuted the Jews in public, demonstrating the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. He's really doing the same ministry, at least the same, the same portion of ministry that Paul is doing. Because if you remember, when Paul comes in, he goes right to the synagogue. And he goes right to the Jews. And he goes, hey, listen, this is what you guys have always studied. This is what you guys have always listened to. But this is how Jesus fulfilled that. And so Apollos is, just, is, is doing that. And so while this is happening, uh, we get to see where, where God doesn't leave the church void by any means. Just because Paul isn't there anymore doesn't mean that the church isn't being fed. It just means Paul's not doing the feeding at this moment. He's, he's going back home. He's doing, he's doing whatever he's doing. We don't really know. But what we see is that uh, Paul is being strengthened by Priscilla and Aquila, uh, being taught. And this is, if we're going to learn anything out of this scripture today, is that guess what? We have a command, each and every one of us have a command to go and strengthen the group, the, group, the church. If, if you see someone who's, who's speaking uh, wrongly, and, and, and we're not talking like a difference of opinion or, 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 or a long-standing, you know, thousand-year theological debate, uh, we, we, we've, we've kind of hit this in our, our Sunday school class. We're going through uh, the book of Matthew, and we're talking about, I mean, Jesus talks about it. He talks about the end times, and of course... The end time, that's a, that's a tremendous discussion. And we know that at some point in time, Jesus is coming back. And, and we, we've got some neat little, uh, we, we know that there are certain things that are going to happen. There, there's some, some events like the rapture and some stuff that, that, that are going to take place. But, but the, the early church from, from like this time till now, people have been arguing about what that order is going to be or what that's going to look like. And that's like none of us, and even in the, even in the room within our own uh, Sunday school hour, uh, we're not all in necessarily like total agreement, but we are all in total agreement that Jesus will come back. And it's okay to have differences of opinion on how we get there with some of those other aspects, but, but we're, we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to have a, have a miss where like someone would say, well, Jesus isn't coming back. Well, that would be wholesale wrong. We would have a problem with that. Okay. So it, when I say that, I'm, I'm completely fine. Like we should be okay with having doctrinal discussions with people. We should be okay with that. And they may have a different opinion as you. And what I would want more than anything is for you not to say, well, I'm going to have to go talk to my pastor. Don't worry, I love talking to you. I love it. I love it. But what I want you to be able to say is, man, this is why I believe what I believe because the scripture says this. Now, if, if you want some guidance or something, man, I, I, I want to help you, but I don't necessarily, don't go into a discussion and your whole argument is, well, one time I read a book, or one time I saw a movie, or one time I, I heard about a guy who said, let's dive into the Word and dig it out ourselves. Let's really fill it in. Believe me, I don't, I don't know any of this stuff, really. 
I mean, every time I talk to you guys, I say, well, this other guy told me this, so I'm telling you, right? Like, that's, that, is, that is the, that is the, uh, the, 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 the nature of, of my ministry, of my pastoring. In fact, uh, one person who I, I really liked, I really respected, he has a little bit of past tense on this because he said this to me, but uh, he, goes, he goes, Andrew, you realize you're nothing but a garbage collector. And I went, well, that was me. What do you mean by that? He goes, that's he goes, don't 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 be offended, which I'm like, well, I'm already pretty offended. No, no offense to anyone who's out there as a garbage collector, that's an awesome job, but uh, but it just seemed odd to me that you would say that. He goes, I'm the same way. And I said, What do you mean? He goes, We go through and we pick through all these uh, all these uh, theologians of past, and, and, and we're not building up our own theology. We're we're going through and studying what other people have already done, and we're we're trying to figure out how that how that how that's true or verifying what they've already said he goes and honestly if you come up to me and start telling me a whole bunch of this is brand new theology that that no one's ever thought of before i'm going to think like that's worse than a garbage collector because now you're just a uh, <laughs> now you're just wrong so well i appreciate the comment like i'm not sure how do you how do you how do you answer that, that apollos is simply telling what he's been taught and he wasn't taught correctly, or at least didn't have that full picture, and Priscilla and Aquila have instructed him. We're going to meet people in our daily lives who don't have the full picture. And one of the biggest importances that we can have in our church life is to be able to communicate with them with love and with grace and not with anger, and to be able to say, hey, listen, I, I understand where you're coming from, but, but this is where you, this is where we're there's two roads, and this one goes this way, and this one goes this way, and I believe this one because this is what the Scripture says, and this is why I get there. And guess what? There's a lot of spots in my life that I have to go, I, I'm going to have to do some more research on that before I finish that conversation, and that's fine. Don't be afraid. Just say, hey, I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't know that answer today. Give me a minute so I can go and do some research. Or as my buddy said, garbage picking collecting but here we go in and he has this we have this we have this crossover point because it happens with apollos where he doesn't he's not aware uh or he's only aware at this point of the baptism of john and then in verse 19 or chapter 19 those first several verses you get paul he comes back to ephesus and he meets these people and they they not only have they have they he goes by uh, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He's saying, did you, did you get the Holy Spirit? And they, they answer, uh, no, and we've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. We, I mean, they're missing the triune God, right? The, the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The three are one, they're separate but equal, but they're, they're together, and this whole mystery of the Trinity, they don't have it. He goes, well, then what baptism were you baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. And this is interesting. See, John came in, in the way and the spirit of Elijah. He is he's this messenger. He's pointing everyone to. In fact, if you, you could argue, uh, and I think you'd be right, you could argue that John is actually the last of the Old Testament prophets. And you go, well, that doesn't make any sense because John was in the New Testament. And I said, hey, yeah, that's absolutely right. He was in the New Testament. But his entire uh, systematic theology was, was the culmination of the Old Testament all the way through. And his whole, his whole point was to, was to come in and, and this, this baptizing and pointing to what would eventually be Jesus. Which is, again, what the whole Old Testament was supposed to be. It's always supposed to be pointing to Jesus. And so Paul goes, all right. John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people that you should believe in the one who would come after him. That is Jesus. We said that's pointing to Jesus. But, the, but, but what we celebrate today is the baptism of the Spirit, which is when God's Spirit completely covers you, fills you up. It's actually why as Baptists that we, we do baptism by immersion. It's, 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 there's nothing overly particularly spiritual about getting baptized in, in complete immersion, although some people would argue that. It's, it's, it's a symbol. It's saying that we are completely dead. We are completely humbling ourselves. It's supposed to be a symbol of being completely covered in the Spirit. Now, when John does, or sorry, when Paul does this, he goes, "All right, you're missing, you're missing a big point." And so, at that point in time, in verse 
uh, 5, he says, when you heard this, they were baptized by the name, uh, sorry, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus, and says, when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began to speak in tongues and to prophesy. There was an immediate response of the Holy Spirit on their life. And that's Acts chapter 19, verse 6. And there are, there are whole groups, in fact, I was talking to our youth this morning, but there are whole groups that just absolutely camp out on this 19, 6 uh, verse here. And, and, and there's actually a couple other spots where, where they get their evidence. It's not just 19, 6. But they say, that, hey, listen, you aren't a Christian if you can't speak in tongues, because speaking in tongues is clearly what happens whenever, whenever you are baptized by the Holy Spirit. And, and to, to that answer, I'll say, man, if we take a look in the book of Acts, I'm, I'm, any time that Paul comes in and you have a group of people, you see it with the apostles uh, on, on the day of Pentecost, you see it whenever they first started uh, down there in, in Samaria, uh, you, you, you've seen this, this is actually the fourth time you've seen this, where they specifically came, they uh, were one of the apostles, this one, this particular one was Paul before, uh, was actually uh, Peter, but uh, where they come in and they, they specifically lay hands and, 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 and immediately they walk out and they are speaking in tongues. And, and, and occasionally it's so easy to draw that conclusion. Oh, you, you've got to speak in tongues. That's the only thing. Well, come on now, let's read the whole scripture. Romans uh, chapter 12. Uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 8, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see the evidence of the Spirit. And it very specifically says that not everyone's going to speak in tongues. It actually specifically says that. There's a whole, there's a whole litany. There's, there's healing and, uh, and teaching, encouragement, giving, to show mercy. These are all gifts of the spirit these are all these are all some that, that when we become a christian we should be filled with the spirit and what i see out of this more than anything else is that there had better be evidence in your life that the spirit dwells within you because at no point in time does the scripture say that you're going to get born again that you are a new creation and you get to just stay like you were i just i just heard this the other day uh uh, from, I think it was MacArthur, I was listening to one of his uh, sermons, and see, there you go, I'm, I'm just a garbage picker, I'm, I'm, I'm validating that comment right now, but um, he goes, if you take an old, because that's the old, but you take a nasty, ugly person, and you show them the grace of God, you know what you got? You have a nasty, ugly person who's now a Christian. And I, and I was so mad, I was like, are you kidding me? No, we have to change. Well, yeah, we do have to change, but guess what? It almost never happens immediately. Sometimes it does. But most of the time, there is a, there is a process that we call sanctification where, where every day we got to work on something because that old self, it's still there. That old self that we were talking about, and maybe that's what Paul was even, even Paul might have been dealing with a little bit back in the back half of verse eight, uh, chapter 18 that we were talking about there. We don't really see that. We don't really know. But maybe that's what he was dealing with. He's trying to figure out, I mean, I got to shake off this old Judaism Maybe not. We don't, we don't really know. But the fact of the matter is, is that we see that in the early church. Remember the whole fight about circumcision? They said, all right, fine. We love God. We love Jesus. But you still got to get circumcision in order to be saved. And then they have to have this whole Jerusalem council. And they said, stop that. Knock it off. Because that old self is still there. But what we got to have evidence in our life is that there is change happening. That the Spirit is within us. Believe me, I talk to plenty of people who will tell me one of two things. Yeah, I'm a Christian because I've been baptized. And I said, that's great. You should be baptized. The scripture tells us this is the model is baptism. Jesus himself said, I shall be baptized in order to fulfill all righteousness. All right? In the early church, we see where people uh, go down and they get baptized at the immediate time. He gets off his, he gets off his chair and goes, well, well, let's keep me from being baptized right now. And the guy goes, nothing. And he goes right to the creek and gets baptized right then. Yes, we have a we, we should be baptized, but guess what? If we never took that next step, if, we, if, if, if that baptism was nothing but an emotional response to a public display, and we just said, all right, I got baptized, I've been dunked in the water, that was not baptism by the Spirit. Now, it better be baptism by the Spirit, because that's what the Scripture tells us we must have. Remember, Jesus talked about this all the way back in John chapter 3. 
fellow by the name of Nicodemus comes up and says, hey, we know that you're, you, you're an obvious teacher of the law. No one, can do the, no one can do the miracles that you do except by God. And Jesus goes, all right. Then in order for you to get to heaven, you must be baptized by water and of the Spirit. We had this baptism of the Spirit. Jesus was talking about it. When we come down this aisle and we do the we do the that 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 moment where you where you come down and you say, "Listen, I'm tired of living my life, and I want to be a Christian. I want to I want to fully submit my life to you." My prayer, and it's something only you know, is that your heart has been changed. That you had had the baptism by the Spirit before you ever came down and got baptism by water. Because the baptism by water, I hope, and it's always my prayer, and I can't read your heart, I, I wish I could. But that baptism by water is simply an example, it's saying, hey listen, this is what God did in my heart, and now I'm doing it publicly for you, to show you that I'm doing this in my public profession. When Paul does this, they, they, didn't, they, just, they, they, were in, they, they didn't know they didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. It was in their ignorance. And so Paul comes and he shows them the truth. And there's immediate evidence of that. And so my question to you this morning, and it's a piggyback on what we talked about last week. Is there evidence of the Spirit in your life? Is there evidence of that? Or is everything, is it just, yeah, I'm going through the motions. I got baptized once when I was seven years old. I go to church occasionally. I go to church every Sunday. It doesn't really matter. Is there evidence of a heart change? When we take a look at what the gifts of the Spirit are, and, and there's a lot of people who just they jump all over the tongues. And in and, and a, and a stroke of real irony, the Southern Baptist uh, Convention, for the most part, has like tried to knock that completely out. So we don't want to talk about that anymore. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you on tongues, but what I am asking you is that you believe that the God Almighty, that you are baptized by the Spirit, that whenever we pray, we say, God, we just ask for healing, that healing will happen. Do, we, do you believe that whenever, whenever uh, you, you read the Scripture, that you are reading the words of God, not man? See, there's a whole pile, and we're doing it with the youth right now. We're talking about all these different gifts of the Spirit. I got, I got stuck down there this morning uh, to teach that class, and actually went, I think, better than I was afraid it was going to go because I wasn't very prepared. Um, but the fact matters that we're talking about the gifts, and there's a whole pile of, whole pile of gifts of the Spirit. But my question is, before we get too caught up on, on what the manifestations look like or whatever, my, my question is, do you look at your life, and can you see an outflowing of the Spirit? In your everyday life. See, they were able to see it because they had this manifestation of the, of, the, of, of, of the speaking in tongues right at that moment. But I'm asking you, as you look into your life, and this is something that only you can answer, is there really a manifestation of the Spirit in your life? Because I'm afraid, we've talked about this at nauseum, but I'm, I'm, I am terribly afraid. There's an awful lot of people who will one day, well, they're all going to die. Everyone's going to die. We're gonna die, and one day we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna meet we're gonna meet God face to face. And best I can tell from Scripture, He's gonna say, "Man, well done, you love me, good and faithful servant." We talk about that, but we tend to forget the other part, where He says, "Get away from me, you doers of iniquity. I never knew you." I don't know about you, that, that keeps me up at night. I don't even want to think about that. And we are dealing with an eternity. And I suggest we get really serious about it. Our closing song.